Grab your tickets to the gun show and get ready to shoot your load, because we're taking aim at headshots. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that is quite literally this week, blowing minds. Today we're continuing the one-year anniversary countdown with my fourth favorite user-submitted topic, sent in from Jerry. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, he didn't include his last name, and his signature was actually in some sort of foreign alphabet, but I'm just guessing that's for privacy reasons. So, Mr. Seinfeld wanted to know, What's the deal with headshots? You get shot, you live. You shoot them, you blow their heads clean to Sunday. What do you got, some sort of bulletproof face? Specifically, Jerry wanted to know about the opening scene in Fallout New Vegas, where your character gets shot in the head at point-blank range, and not only lives, but walks away with practically no brain damage. So today, we're looking at ballistics, world politics, physics, and neuroscience to test the accuracy of this video game trope. Then we're throwing all the information together in one delicious milkshake of knowledge to see how believable the opening of Fallout actually is. Let's get one thing out of the way right off the bat. Yes, you can survive a headshot. In fact, studies show that 10% of people who are shot in the head survive. 10%! You have better odds of surviving a headshot than I do of writing a decent joke for this show. But sometimes the odds are really in your favor. Like Wenceslao Miguel, nicknamed El Fusilado, who was sentenced to death by Mexican firing squad. He survived 10 bullets, including one point-blank to the head intended to finish him off. It's unknown how exactly he survived, but he escaped prison and then lived a full life. You remember Chumba Wumba, that group famous for the song Tub Thumping in 1997? Yeah, I don't either. Apparently they had other songs, and one was about Wenceslau. I was going to make a joke about it being a fate worse than death by firing squad, but actually it's kinda catchy, so check it out in the ending credits. Anyway, Winston Slough shows us that it can be done, but what determines whether the odds are ever in your favor? Well first, we have to look at precisely where the bullet hits. You see, not all parts of the brain are created equally. It's like with children. Adults always say that all children are special, but we all know that some children are more special than others. And when it comes to survival, certain parts of the brain are much more important than others, specifically the thalamus and the brainstem. Think of the thalamus as an old-school telephone operator, taking in all incoming sensory information and relaying it to the correct higher-level processing centers. The brainstem, then, acts like the actual telephone lines, transmitting information to the brain and then back to the body. These two deep brain structures are the most essential for basic functioning. Sure, all the rest of the brain is important, but you can survive without a lot of it. Need proof? Take, for instance, the story of Phineas Gage, who, while working on a railroad tamping down blasting powder, set off an explosion that shot a metal bar through his head, destroying the left frontal lobe of his brain. Physically, he was fine. Perfectly normal, in fact. What was affected, though, was his personality. The once hard-working, responsible, and respectful Phineas became a completely different person, becoming impatient and unpredictable, as the bar had destroyed the part of his brain associated with inhibition. People who knew him described him as no longer Gage. Then there are the cases of Clive Waring and patient H.M. Both men lost their hippocampi, the part of the brain which transfers short-term memories into long-term storage. As a result, they were both left with anterograde amnesia, meaning that they were unable to form new memories, like a real-life memento. For Clive, the only person he remembers, and will remember, is his wife. I'm going to see your sister, Adele. Her daughter's got married recently uh, oh, is in New Zealand, oh. and so they're having a party. Funny how the ladies acquire a different title when they get married. Do you know who I'm going to see tomorrow? Uh, Buckingham Palace. No, really, guess. I do don't you, know. You don't know. Mm. Adele. Oh, is it? Yeah. Do you know? Do you know why I'm going? No. Yeah. She's having a party at her house tomorrow. It's her birthday, isn't it? No. Yeah. Do you know why? No. It's to do with her daughter. I yeah, see. Do you why know I'm... why her daughter's having a party? No. Guess. No, I don't. She's just got married. Oh, I see. She just got married in. Do you know what country she just got married in? No, I don't. In New Zealand. Oh, I see. Yeah. 
unable to complete a sentence before he forgets what he was talking about, but otherwise functioning normally. The brain is truly a fascinating organ. So, where you get shot is the first big factor, but you also have to consider what you're getting shot with. For example, in games like Battlefield or Call of Duty, you're using high caliber automatic weaponry. In our Fallout scene, it's just a simple handgun. And for futuristic shooters, we're dealing with plasma technology or particles traveling at the speed of light. And here is where we run into our good friend the Geneva Conventions again. Man, you just can't get away from shooters with without bringing these things up. More specifically, a related document, the Second Hague Accord, which banned ammo that, quote, causes undue damage, end quote, in times of war. Or to put it differently, ammunition that has a hollow point, explodes, or is likely to flatten out and stay in the human body, thus causing more internal damage. So, take for instance Mass Effect's incendiary ammo, which sets targets on fire. In today's world, that would be a big no-no for any country that signed the accord. Instead, this policy advocates the use of ball ammo, which is smaller and smoother than other ammunition. It also travels faster, meaning it's much more likely to pass through its target, resulting in less overall damage. So does this mean that headshots in war games are overly lethal? Absolutely not. But it does provide some evidence for how our character from Fallout might survive. First, consider the army game. The guns you use in games like COD or BFF3 are larger and use higher caliber ammo. Caliber is a measure of the diameter of a bullet, so a higher caliber means a bigger bullet and thus more damage. I mean, look at some of these things. They're bigger than my unspecified body part. Now compare that to Benny's weapon here. For those of you who haven't played the game, his gun is named the Maria. Maria. It's a 9mm pistol that's firing ball ammo. Perusing gun forums, many people question the strength of 9mm bullets, concerned that both their size and shape are not enough to consistently deliver killing blows. In fact, many users share anecdotes of how 9mm bullets have deflected off a target's skull. Which brings us to our last point, the skull. If you want to penetrate the head, you first have to get through the skull, which is difficult considering both its thickness and its round shape. First, the skull isn't one uniform thickness. In fact, you know the phrase, hit him right between the eyes? That may actually make it harder to achieve a successful headshot, since one of the thickest parts of the skull is the glabella, the protrusion of bone between the eyebrows. My research showed that the force required to fracture a skull can range anywhere between 16 and 350 foot-pounds, depending on the part of the skull you target. Remember, though, that this is just the energy needed to fracture or crack the skull. You'll need more if you're going to actually puncture it with a bullet. Now compare those numbers to the muzzle energy of a 9mm bullet leaving a gun, which is anywhere between 350 and 450 foot-pounds. In other words, at thinner portions of the skull, a 9mm bullet would have little resistance, but at thicker areas, the skull will put up quite a bit of resistance. And all of this is true without taking into account the bullet's trajectory. So far, we've been assuming that it's a straight-on shot towards a flat part of the skull, but if the bullet angle is off, some of the initial force leaving the muzzle will be displaced, meaning it'll have less overall penetrating power. So you got all that? Good, because it's time we start putting it together. So what do we know? The essential parts of the brain, the type of gun and ammo being used, and the anatomical barriers in place to protect the head. The question is then, would the courier be able to survive this particular headshot? In short, it all comes down to angles. Benny is firing on someone who's kneeling down and looking up. Restaging this at a different angle to look at the bullet's trajectory, we see that his shot is either going to have to penetrate the thickest part of the skull, the glabella, or it's going to hit the rounded top of the head. The slight tilt of the head upward greatly reduces the flat area of the forehead where he can aim. When considering Maria, Maria, Maria is a 9mm pistol with maximum muzzle energy only slightly above the force needed to fracture the thickest parts of the skull, every foot-pound sacrificed increases the courier's chance of survival. Finally, assuming the bullet does pass through the skull, look at where it's going. Through the top of the brain. 
Case studies like Phineas Gage showed us that you can live without these portions. The brainstem and thalamus, the essential regions for survival, are located down and to the back. The bullet wouldn't come close to those areas, unless of course it stayed in the skull and bounced around, but remember, Maria uses ball ammo, which we found is designed to pass in and out of a target while making as little internal damage as possible. So, is it feasible that your character survived the headshot with relatively little injury? Injury? Surprisingly, yes. Someone called George Clooney because this scene is like a perfect storm of bullet survival. But here's the thing, like a lot of my research, none of it matters. You see, you get shot not once, but twice in the head. If your odds of survival were 10% for the first shot, by the laws of probability your odds of surviving two get knocked down to 1%. But realistically, it's probably even less. You see, the first shot would knock you unconscious, meaning you're laying down on your side, exposing the most vulnerable part of your skull, the temple, for the second bullet. And trust me, at point-blank range, Marie. Maria's not gonna miss that target. <laughs> So technically, your game is over before it even begins. Like we found with Zombie Shepard, brain damage has once again destroyed the realism of a video game. But I guess I should have seen this one coming. I mean, being able to have a conversation with my surgically removed brain? Unlikely. Having it talk back to me like Stewie from Family Guy? Figure that out, have we? Would you like a cookie? That's just ridiculous. Anyway, it's all just a theory. A game theory.